Hey gang, boy, I uh, just thought I'd throw up a little video about a idea I've got to diffuse the whole environmental argument regarding putting a pipeline. Now, in the first place, I do multiple pipes, okay? I'd have like a dozen pipes. I would concoct a new specification for pipeline pipe segments, and I would have a manufacturer construct these. And these segments of pipe would include a uh, fitting for a flapper valve in here, okay? So you got your piece of pipe, and the oil is running this way towards you. Inside there, you've got a hinged flap that at any time can uh, be triggered by a solenoid chink to release and the viscosity of the oil pull it up against a fitting here, diagonal fitting, so it will have a lot of surface area to spread and design this so that you have these every so many feet, however many feet you need it, a hundred, a thousand, depending on the size of the pipe, okay? If you have really small pipe, you can do it every thousand feet, every 5,000 feet probably if you have really small pipe, but um, if you have, and depending on the flow rate, uh, of course, but uh, inclination if you're just doing a gravity fed pipe. But anyway, uh, back at the source, you've got a main valve, okay? So say a piezo sensor that's placed every 100 feet picks up that somebody just shot a hole in this thing, okay? <laughs> Now you got a leak out here, and you don't know precisely where it is, but from the data you gather from the piezo sensors, where you have a monitoring station, a computer digitally monitoring those things constantly, okay? And the computer data is right there for you to see, aha, here's the peak, it's right between these two sensors. You send a team out to evaluate the situation and hopefully catch the nitwit that just shot a hole in it, or whatever, <laughs> or blew it up, or whatever. But meanwhile, as soon as that, uh, as soon as something exceeds threshold where you know that some damage, significant damage has been done, those solenoids automatically trigger and that particular pipe, chunk, 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 all these things shut down immediately, instantaneously, so that uh, the pressure is distributed and not one takes all that, you know, oil has, has viscosity and it has uh, a uh, amount of Compressibility, you know, basically uh, uh, an amount of uh, what you would call uh, not uh, bulk. My anyway, <laughs> in uh, fluid dynamics, I've got a brain lock. Anyway, <laughs> uh, whatever the fact, uh, it's not going to just, you know, uh, have to be precisely closing at the same time. But if they can close within a few milliseconds of the same time, it would probably be good. And just have these things so they all just trigger immediately when you have any kind of issue. So that they all just close and you get the force distributed on all of them instead of one of them to the point where there won't be any maintenance here. And um, once these things close and you go in and you get the problem resolved in the piece of pipe, replace it or whatever you have to do, and, and drain the remaining oil out of course to keep it out of the environment and make sure the seal isn't down there being drowned by the oil, it is, of course, uh, we know would not be good because it costs about seventy thousand dollars per seal and then you have to throw it back into the water and it gets eaten immediately by a killer whale. But anyway, <laughs> that happened years ago. That always uh, was one of my favorite stories of... <laughs> anyway, but... <clears throat> okay, uh, so you get all these things to close immediately, stop the leak, and then you have another solenoid that opens, this time sequentially. You don't do them all at once. This solenoid, and you could have an oil immersed solenoid. This works just perfectly fine. We've got designs that can be oil immersed. You have a, a panel that's screwed in with a pressure plate, and then your connections come out of that plate for this thing to be operated. And you just you have to run uh, wire up the line like any other wire dedicated uh, plenum up the line on the outside of each pipe for the uh, accumulation of these control wires, the uh, solenoids. Uh, usually don't take very much current and uh, you can distribute that uh, over a common line too. You can just ground one side and you know to, to the pipe. Anyway, so um, the uh, uh, solen second solenoid then opens on this one only. You, you have it uh, 
stop the, um, uh, of course you want each of them individual on the other so you don't have to shut off the whole pipe. Uh, you can let the rest of it keep flowing, I guess, or you could just shut off the whole pipe. It wouldn't matter too much, except you've got to clear the whole thing when you're done, and it would reduce the time to have individual uh, closure solenoids. But anyway, to have the uh, restating uh, solenoid be where you open this pathway and it begins to let the pressure equalize between the two sides of the plate. And so in doing so, now you can uh, eventually have a spring just pull that thing right back to position when the pressure is equalized on the two sides, when the leak, the control leak opens and it lets the pressure relieve, then the spring just pulls it right back down and you relock it with the solenoid. Again, you have a two-way two solenoid there to pull, push, pull, and lock it back into position so that it can again be triggered and released as need be. So it's an absolutely maintenance-free solution for that part of it, except for the part they blow up or whatever. Okay, so this should uh, convince any environmentalist that we're only going to lose a few hundred gallons maybe in the typical case where somebody shoots a hole in it or something. If they're going to blow up a pipeline, they might blow up a tanker, but in this case you're going to lose a lot less oil than if they blow up a tanker, okay, into the environment. And so I think any environmentalist would be out of his mind not to think this is the best solution ever concocted. Uh, for keeping oil out of the environment, these pipelines will, will, over their life, will time average leak much less oil into the environment than transporting it by any other means. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to establish that here on YouTube that uh, this is an idea that I came up with here, pondering the whole thing, and I think uh, if we implement that, you know, it will diffuse the uh, arguments from uh, any side that might want to defeat having pipelines to run oil from here to there. I think it's a great way to do it in the long term if you have massive reserves somewhere and you don't have the ability to um, distribute it from that place. It makes perfect sense to build a major pipeline to a distribution center. Yep. Anyway, so um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that, I guess. Anything else there? Uh, yeah, the thing returns to position. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the whole. I think there was some other thought I had on that, but anyway, yeah, we'll design the whole thing with parameters as uh, people get a hold of this and, and uh, decide that uh, maybe they're seeing what I'm seeing here, or maybe it's completely implausible. So for some reason I haven't thought of. Uh, maybe somebody can let me know that, but I I don't see anything wrong with it. I've built a lot of stuff and know enough about physics to know that that uh, if you did the right proportions of the size of the pipe, the rate of the flow, and the uh, spacing of the valves, that it would uh, not damage anything when they close. <laughs> I think that's the, uh, that's the main factor there, is just having the force distribution when it can be just close one and you had all that mechanical momentum, you would have such an incredible pressure, it would either blow the pipe up or destroy the valve, <laughs> I'm sure. Anyway, all right, have a good day.